This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a cool new gadget that I designed recently. So this weirdly shaped PCB provided by PCBWay is a power supply board for breadboards. What is interesting about it is that it can negotiate power with a compatible USB power adapter and it can provide a lot of power. It is based on the CH224K USB PD decoy chip and an MP2393 buck converter capable of delivering up to 3 amps. Unlike this other breadboard power supply that is based on an inefficient and low power low dropout regulators, my board uses the previously mentioned buck converter. Also, thanks to the PD decoy chip, the negotiated voltage and its corresponding current is available on the board via a screw terminal. So this integrated power supply board allows to power both the microcontroller and its peripherals such as displays, sensors and so on, and also power demanding components such as motors. I will demonstrate this later on in the video, so please stay tuned. But of course, before the demonstration, I need to assemble a few boards so I can show them. So let's enjoy a little board assembly clip. The boards are almost done, I hope you enjoyed the process, and as you can see the SMD components are in place, but some through hole parts are still missing. Let me use my trick and assemble the rest of the board. For the screw terminal and the two different switches I am using some sort of sticky putty which is often known as blue tech. This holds the parts in place firmly while I solder their legs on the bottom side of the PCB. The only thing that one must be aware of is that if the putty gets too warm it can stick to the components and the board. But just let it cool down and then use the big blob to pick it up from the board. This little hack is a perfect third, fourth or maybe even fifth hand for soldering. The power pins are easier to solder. I just need to plug the 2x3 pins in the breadboard and place the PCB over them and the rest is easy. And now everything is ready for testing. As a reference I plugged in an Arduino Nano in the board. I'm using a smaller breadboard for this presentation so you might get the dimensions now as you can see my power supply board and the Arduino Nano together. I think the board turned out to be nice. It sits well in the breadboard. Both the two connectors and the two switches are easy to access so everything seems to be okay. If you watch carefully you can see three test points on the PCB as well. They come in handy for troubleshooting or when you just want to see if the values are correct. If you check the back side of the board, we can see a small table on it. And then this table provides the settings for the dip switch to select an input voltage provided by the USB power supply. One thing that uh, is good to know that it is not recommended to request 5 volts when you expect 5 volts on the output of the buck converter. Due to losses and efficiency, you just cannot get 5 volts. However, if you want to set the output to 3.3 volts, it is okay to request 5 volts. But otherwise I would recommend let's say 12 volts. So for testing we need a PD compatible USB power supply and this is what I use and you can see its output voltages and corresponding current values. It is a beefy one, perfect for powering most of the hobby projects that we can typically assemble on a breadboard. I also wanted to use some fancy smart cable that shows the current, voltage and power provided through the cable, but I could not record its display properly because it was flickering. But uh, nevertheless, this is the cable what I used. So firstly, let's check the power delivery part of the board. I hooked up the screw terminal with a multimeter and then I changed the configuration of the dip switch to request different voltages. And you can see that all the four voltages are negotiated properly. So. Since we can get 12 volts or even higher voltages easily, this allows us to drive more power-hungry devices directly from this board. 
You don't need to rely on the microcontroller's weak onboard regulator to provide 3.3 volt or 5 volt input voltage. And you don't need a separate power supply to feed, for example, a stepper motor or a large array of LEDs. Just for fun, I set the voltage to 9 volts and I connect a 3 ampere Peltier module to the screw terminal directly. As you can see, about 1.5 amperes was drawn and nothing started to smoke or smolder, so that's a good sign. And then I did the same exercise with the DC motor. It has much less power consumption, but still no issues to drive it directly. But obviously you would not feed a motor like this. You would feed the motor driver first using this output and then the motor driver would feed the motor. I just did this for the sake of the demonstration, but uh, just don't do this. Also, as I mentioned before, the board is made primarily for providing either 3.3 or 5 volts for microcontrollers. So I put a big switch on the side of the board that allows you to select the output voltage that is supplied to the rails on the breadboard. So let's test this. At 5 volts, we have 4.9 volts which is about 2% off, so it is well within the tolerances. And at 3.3 volt, we can observe 3.2 volts, which is about 3%, so it is also within the tolerances. So I am satisfied with this. And let's do something freaky and uh, put some stress on the VUSB line by directly connecting a Peltier cooler to it. While we are measuring the 5 volt rail, we cannot observe a single digit of change, which is nice. So even if I load the input of the voltage converter, the output of it remains stable. Let's do an even more silly thing and let's load the 5 volt rail directly with a motor. This is something which you should not do in any circumstances, but this time we have a much better power supply than a low dropout regulator on an Arduino or similar boards. So let's do it. And as you can see, the voltage slightly drops, but it still stays within the tolerances. So it's great. And now let me show and explain you the design of this circuit. I typically don't do this, but this time I decided to nominate my design to PCBWay's new design contest. And since the competition prefers the shared projects to be open source, I also release the schematics and relevant files to match the requirements. You can find all the files and resources on my project page, so check the link in the description. And of course, if you have a project, I encourage you to join the competition and upload your project. You can win valuable prizes, and you can become a part of a great community of creators. So head over to PCBWay and check the details. All right, so here's my KiCad design. So let me uh, guide you through it. First, uh, let's start with the uh, power decoy circuit part. Uh, so first of all, uh, this circuit is the exact copy that you can find in the data sheet. So there's nothing uh, extraordinary about this and you can replicate the same circuit by just reading the data sheet of uh, this chip right here. But uh, maybe a few things which is uh, worth mentioning is that I connected the shield and the ground together. I just mentioned this because when I googled this, uh, whether I should do this or not, uh, I found out that there is a big debate about this uh, question on the internet. So I just picked the side and then I said that this specific circuit uh, probably it is not sensitive to this uh, thing. So I just uh, connected the shield to the ground, which is then connected to the ground on the PCB as well. And then uh, of course, uh, data plus and data minus pins are wired together and then they will continue as one uh, singular uh, trace. Uh, one trace for the negative and one trace for the positive, of course. The fun fact is that on the PCB itself, unlike uh, you would usually do, I did not uh, do a differential uh, trace between the connector and the chip, and the chip works just fine. So I think uh, that is only uh, important for like USB communication when you try to communicate with the computer, especially at high speeds, but for negotiating the voltage probably it doesn't matter, so that's that. And then uh, CC1, CC2 goes directly to the chip, because that's uh, basically part of the uh, power negotiation. So then, since the chip does that, we don't connect uh, resistors here, as we would usually do, but uh, the chip will uh, take care of it. 
And then uh, what is more important to understand is that the VBUS or VUSB, it's uh, the same letters but in different order. Uh, so the VUSB is the voltage provided by the power adapter. And that is the voltage that we can uh, negotiate and adjust between uh, 5 to 20 volts at uh, different steps. So then uh, whenever we change the configuration of the dip switches, then uh, we will get different uh, voltage on the VUSB uh, bus or rail. And then that VUSB will be carried uh, towards the uh, buck converter, which will then convert it down to either 3.3 volt or 5 volts. We have an LED here with the simple uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor and uh, that is just uh, the power good or PG uh, status LED. So when the negotiation between the chip and the power supply went well, then uh, the LED will uh, light up. So that means that the requested voltage is provided by the uh, power supply. And then if we look at this part here, uh, this is just the dip switch uh, configuration. So all the rails for the three uh, CFG uh, pins, as you can see, CFG 1, 2, 3, are pulled up to the power supply uh, voltage. And then uh, whichever you switch will be pulled down uh, to ground, of course. And then uh, based on their uh, status, either they are at the high level one or low level zero, based on a combination of these uh, three uh, switches, we will have some sort of output voltage. So you can see here that uh, the value of the CFG one, two, three uh, will determine the uh, requested voltage. And uh, if you were watching the video carefully enough, you can see that on the back of the PCB, you see the exact uh, inverse of this table. And uh, why is that is the following. Uh, if you read the data sheet, then you will see this uh, specific table. But then they wired the uh, CFG123 in the opposite way. So they are, uh, how to express, pulled down by default. And then uh, you pull them up uh, with the switch. So actually you do the opposite uh, thing with the switches as you do it on this uh, specific uh, circuit. So therefore the uh, logic table will be the opposite. I, I hope I uh, explained that uh, well. But uh, yeah, if you follow the table on the back of the PCB and you change the switch or switches accordingly, then you will have the correct uh, requested voltage. And you could see that in the video as well that it works like that. Down here we have two other components which are also part of the uh, PCB. So this is just for the screw terminal. So as I said, the screw terminal directly receives the uh, USB uh, voltage, which we negotiated with the power supply. So that is that. So it uh, receives the common ground and then the VUSB. So there's nothing fancy about it. And then here on the right hand side, these guys here, uh, they are the two by three uh, header pins on the both sides. So they are the pins which are actually plugged into the breadboard and this is how uh, they are uh, wired together. Then now we can look at the buck converter. So this is again just the copy of the let's say factory provided uh, circuit. Actually I simplified it just a little bit but uh, the basic principles are the same. And uh, the only thing which differs, like in uh, principles from the original design, is that I made a voltage selector uh, part on this. But uh, let's start with the chip. So we have the chip. Uh, this is the MP2393, which is the, let's say, successor of the MP2315, which is also a very popular buck converter chip. But this is even better. And then uh, Basically what happens here is uh, VUSB comes in and then it uh, goes into the chip and then uh, with the combination of uh, some uh, capacitors and inductors and then high frequency uh, switching 
we build up uh, uh, the corresponding uh, power and then we provide either 3.3 volts or uh, 5 volts on the uh, output and uh, since we are at the output uh, we have a test point and uh, we also have a fuse I selected it to be a uh, 500 uh, milliamps or 750 milliamps uh, fuse you can choose different uh, fuses uh, because this uh, size uh, 12 10 uh, imperial size or uh, 32 25 uh, metric size allows you to select a lot of different kind of uh, fuses so you can choose it for your application and then uh, this is also an interesting part here this is the feedback part so actually we have a trace starting from here from the junction between L1 and C3 which is basically the output voltage so that output voltage comes back to the feedback and then based on the selector switch's uh, position either we switch to a lower value a resistor R8 and that will result in the 3.3 volt uh, output voltage and or we can uh, switch to the higher value resistor and then that will result in the uh, 5 volt output voltage and uh, yeah so basically we just uh, divert uh, the circuit towards one of these resistors and then uh, we have this uh, set of uh, resistors again and then based on the values of these yeah basically three resistors and uh, the output voltage the feedback pin will sense some value and then based on that value it will drive the uh, chip to provide the, the corresponding output voltage so basically that's uh, the wall circuit and if you are interested in some details, uh, please visit my website. Link is in the description. I put uh, I put a lot of pictures and everything there, so you can find some extra resources there. And uh, also, don't forget to visit my PCBWA project site because uh, you will find all the resources there. For example, the schematics, the Gerber files, and uh, some other good uh, stuff. So don't forget to visit my PCBWA project site. And if you like this kind of content please consider becoming my YouTube channel member because that contribution can help me to develop more similar devices and uh, put more resources and uh, time into these kind of projects. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.